This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another After Effects quick tip video. Today we're talking about a tip that I learned from Ross Owens over on Twitter on hacking the After Effects text box. Now a couple of months back I released a preset called Responsive Auto Scale, and this does basically the exact opposite of what we're trying to do today. But basically this preset takes a defined width and height parameter, kind of sets a region for itself. And then whatever you throw in here, so for example, this is a text layer, so if I type in responsive, it will actually kind of scale up the text. And then as I add more text, it kind of scales down to fit. And this works for videos, images, graphics, logos, whatever assets you have. But if you want to do this with After Effects text layers and you didn't want things to kind of scale down, you actually want things to be limited and cut off by a certain region, you can use the native After Effects text box. So go ahead and select your text tool here and just drag a define region. And this is different from just clicking on a single point and typing your text. That would kind of create a single line or a point text. Um, this is actually defining a region here. So if you type in some stuff like this is an After Effects text layer. And so now this text layer is kind of defined in this kind of box region or a text box. Now the issue comes when you want to kind of animate this or change the size of this text box. So for example, there is no way of really doing that unless you go into the interface here, the graphical interface, and actually visually click on these little handles and drag things down and to resize the width this way. Um, and so this is kind of a visual way of doing it, but there is like no slider that you can animate this with. Um, so if you wanted to animate this, it can be kind of tricky unless you do some clever expressions I learned from Ross over on Twitter. Essentially, the idea is that we can't necessarily change the size of this text box, but what we can do is scale the layer up and down. So that will kind of change the width and height of this text box. Now, if, we, if you do that, obviously the text will get too small or too large. So you need to compensate that by adjusting the font size to scale up and down inversely to kind of compensate for the scale. So here is an example of this kind of rig using some sliders. And so for example, this is kind of a text box here that I created. And if I change the width, you can see that we can actually animate the width of this text box. We can increase it or decrease it. And these kind of behave um, how you kind of expect it. And there's some caveats, which I'll kind of talk about later in this tutorial. And of course we can change the font size here as well. So we can increase the font size and we can change the width of the box and things kind of cut off and reveal somewhat as you would expect. So to do this, go ahead and select your text tool and go ahead and drag and create your text box. I don't think it's gonna work with the point text. So you need to actually draw a physical text box and just kind of type in some text. So this is some text from After Effects. It should resize. So this is just some dummy text and we'll go in here and we wanna add three sliders. So I'm gonna type in slider control and we'll add a slider control to our text layer. And we need three of them, so I'll go ahead and duplicate them. The first one is gonna be font size. The second one is going to be text box width. And the last one is going to be letting. Now this part is very, very important and you wanna set the anchor point appropriately before you start adding the expressions in. So go ahead and select your move anchor point tool and actually set the anchor point to where you want things to scale from. So if you're doing left align or right align, you know, you would place the anchor point appropriately so things don't move around because we are playing with scale here. And if you're not careful with the anchor point, you start scaling things up and down, things will start moving weirdly due to the anchor point being misaligned. So for this, because I want to move my anchor point to the top left, right at the edge of the box. And you'd be more accurate with this if you want to use some math. Um, I'm gonna use a left align paragraph alignment here and we'll set this back here. And so now our anchor point is at the top of left of my text box. And this is very, very important before you start adding expressions that will kind of manipulate things to kind of hide the actual true top left region here. So we'll go into the After Effects text, we'll go into the text and we'll go to the source text, hold down alter option to add an expression to the source text and we're gonna start writing our expression. So I'm gonna define some variables first. I'm gonna go ahead and type in text size is our first variable. And that's going to equal our font size slider, semicolon. We'll type in target width equals our text box width slider, semicolon. And we'll type one more here called line height equals our letting slider, semicolon. And then lastly, we'll type in original box width. 
1920, which is gonna be basically the width of the text box before any scale was added, according to Ross. So now we need to calculate a scale factor. So I'm gonna type in S for scale factor. We'll type in our target width divided by our original box width, and that will give us kind of like a scale ratio. So in the later versions of After Effects, we actually have control over some source text styles and stuff like font size through expressions. So if you're using an older version of After Effects, this may not work, but we're gonna set our font size using expressions now. So we're gonna type in text, source text, style, set font size, and it needs to be capitalized just like this. We'll do parentheses, and then we'll type in our text size divided by our scale factor, semicolon. And then we'll get an error saying that, hey, you can't divide it by zero. And that's because all of our sliders are set to zero right now. So just set the sliders to some arbitrary number before you type into the expressions. So font size, just say 16, text box width 500, and letting 1.6, you know, just to kind of avoid the error that we get by dividing by zero. Then we'll go to our transform, hold down alter option, hit on scale. And now we'll type in our scale expression which is gonna be something similar. So we're gonna type in original box width equals 1920 semicolon. And then we'll type in target width, just like last time. And that's going to equal our text box width semicolon. And then we'll create our scale factor. So S equals target width divided by original box width semicolon. And then lastly, we'll do our value which is the current scale times our scale factor, semicolon. So cool. So now whenever we scale down our text layer, it will actually scale up our font size to compensate and vice versa. So if I go in here and I go ahead and increase the font size, I can play around with the text box width. And as you can see, we're revealing more and more of our stuff here. Now, depending on certain fonts and how you have things set up, you can get some weird jumping and some weird movement in the text. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your anchor point is set to the appropriate spot where you're scaling from. That will kind of help prevent some of the jittery movement sometimes whenever you scale things up and down. Another thing you can try doing is actually mainly defining the line height, which is why we created this line height variable here. So at the end of our source text style set font size, we'll go ahead and add an addition to this. We'll go ahead and add a period set letting. Uh, parentheses here, and we'll type in our text size times our line height times S and hit OK. And you shouldn't really see a change, but this can kind of help with the weird line height movement whenever you start scaling the text box width up and down, depending on the font. So just play around with it. That is kind of a caveat of this kind of technique. And also it will not kind of shift things based on characters. It will shift things based on words, which makes sense for readability. But now you have three sliders which you can mess around with, and this can kind of give you that fake resizing text box look. If you're doing like UI or UX animations, you're trying to imitate or show a text box in your animation for whatever reason, um, you can actually now go ahead and play around with the text box width, and you can kind of manually define um, this region and kind of cut off text, and you can scale the font size appropriately and kind of maintain some sort of control over the text box width using expressions. So obviously not everyone's gonna be able to use this in their projects, but if you need it, this could be a handy little tip that I learned. Mad props to Ross Owens for sharing this trick. A lot of people found it very useful on Slack and Twitter. I just wanted to share with you guys. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks for a sponsor over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any code knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this. Leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.